Welcome again to Reading the Bible Together. Uh, we're continuing our series in the Epistle of 1 John, and uh, we are going to be talking this week about light versus darkness. And we've got a couple of verses we're going to read to start with. We'll be referring to them again, as well as, of course, like we always do, verses in other places in the Scripture. This is 1 John 1, 7, and then 1 John 1, 9. And then we'll, we'll repeat these later on uh, as we explain some things. 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. In 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And of course... Uh, as before, these verses help us to understand the themes in John and, the, and some important ideas in the Scripture. And light and darkness are, uh, the contrast between light and darkness, are important themes in the Bible. Um, and it's very clearly set out in our first, the first verse today, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, uh, then we have fellowship with each other and uh, are able to enjoy the blessings of, uh, of Jesus' salvation and sacrifice for us. God's light comes to us through Jesus. Uh, God's light shines on Scripture to help us see the truth more clearly. God's light shines on the world to help, help us to see what the world is really like. God's light shines on ourselves to help our, us see ourselves as God sees us. But, of course, Satan, who is called the Prince of Darkness, does not want us to see. So uh, everything is done from his side to obscure the light. But as the scripture says, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. So are we tempted sometimes to dismiss this idea of there being true lines between darkness and light in the modern world, or maybe we're tempted as we watch the news and we hear about all the evil things going on that the darkness has run so rampant that, the, that everything is beyond hope. So we know that neither one of these is really a tenable position as Christians. We know that the answer to both of these questions, to both of these um, desires to either run away from the realities surrounding us or or to just dismiss um, things and, and say, well, there's, there's really no such thing as real evil. We know that the answer to both of those questions is just to look to Jesus. And actually, so does John. And here's what he says in his gospel. So remember, we're working through these familiar verses from the letter of 1 John, but we, we have a lot to, John has a lot to say in his gospel too. And when we look at them together, sometimes there's some things that really pop. So let's listen to this uh, from John 1, verses 4 and 5. In him was life, and the life was light, the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So Jesus obviously saw light and darkness as a big deal, and this is right here in the introduction of the Gospel of John. This is how John introduces Jesus as being this light in the darkness. So we should pay attention. You know, if this is if this is what Jesus is about, we need to pay attention to this. And so don't you think that means we should talk for a second about the problem of sin? Yeah, people don't like to talk about sin. Uh, we should talk uh, about it anyway, I'm afraid. But we need to talk about it. Um, once again, from 1 John, uh, if we say we have sinned, this is 1 John 1.10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. In both the gospel and uh, in his letter here, uh, John is stating clearly that there's a right way and a wrong way to choose uh, how we ought to live. And so, of course, we're supposed to, God is light. We choose the light and not the darkness. Uh, and this can seem kind of daunting, but uh, we say we need to understand what it says. If 
if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So it is a problem we have to deal with. Um, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. We're supposed to walk in the light and the problem uh, that we call sin is we aren't always walking in the light. And uh, that's what we need to address. And uh, that's what actually what God needs to address through Jesus working in us. So what we have to do, well, the first thing we have to do is read the whole thing together. Because we know that these wonderful verses from John are very inspiring, but when they're ripped out of their contents, context, they lose so much of their strength. So let's put, uh, let's put this all together, starting in verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Note that John, that when John mentions that we have all sinned, he doesn't say, so go off in a corner and be ashamed of yourselves and it's all over. He's not beating on, on us. He, say, he, he doesn't say um, it's not a problem either, because it is a problem, but he sets out the solution. If you have sinned, Jesus has the answer. Jesus died for you. Accept it and get on with it. Get on with doing the work that he has laid out for us. If we understand this idea and, and we don't take it lightly, but also don't waste time um, moaning about it, we can really be stepping into God's kingdom, God's solution, and the plans that God has for us. And look at what's being offered. God's offering fellowship with us, but he's pure. So we need to be pure. He's faithful. So he's going to forgive our sins as he's promised. And, and he promises both in the Old and New Testament to forgive our sins. And he's just. He's accomplished this not by just ignoring the problem, but by giving us Jesus. And so through his death and resurrection on the cross, now we can be cleansed from that unrighteousness and be having fellowship with him in purity and walking in the light and doing his work for his kingdom. So we're going to just uh, focus in on a couple of passages, one from the Old Testament that talks about how God is faithful and one from the New that talks about how God is just and how that uh, ties together. Now, this verse, this passage from the psalm, Psalm 32, uh, is talking basically about forgiveness. Now, we usually think of forgiveness in the New Testament in terms of what Jesus has done, but it's very evident in, in the Old Testament and the psalms as well. And this is a person who's been forgiven, and it's, it's, it outlines a struggle that this person's gone through to uh, acknowledge his sin and transgression and then seek forgiveness. This is Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you at in a time of distress, and the rush of the mighty waters shall not reach them. So this all revolves around verse 5. I acknowledged my sin. I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave uh, the guilt of my sin. And that's what God does, because he is faithful. But then uh, it's done in this context of justice, because 
Of course, the reason that's possible is because Christ died for us. And of course, this is a, a passage from Romans chapter 3 that you've heard quite a lot. And Paul can get a little complicated here, but I think uh, you can get the, the gist of it here. Romans uh, chapter 3, verse 21. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. It's uh, Paul is a lot more uh, dense. Uh, yeah, dense. That's the least. Yeah, that's that's the way to describe it. Uh, than, than, than first than John is in First John, but the idea is the same. That uh, we have the problem. God mm -hmm. has a solution, and through faith we can we can receive that solution. So Jesus' death on the cross paves the way for our fellowship with God and makes it possible for us to walk in the light. And Jesus laid down his life for us. And that's actually what we will be discussing next week. But before we leave, let's hear our verses one more time. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We know these verses. We've heard them over and over again. But as usual with this series, we encourage you to read them in their context. Read through at least the first chapter or maybe the whole book of 1 John. It's very short. It doesn't take very long. And enjoy the ideas that these verses spread throughout that book of 1 John. So once again, Jesus has laid down his life. Um, for us, and uh, and that's uh, why this is able to happen, and that's what we're going to be discussing next week. We hope to see you then. <laughs>